It is with great honor and privilege I'm here with you this morning. I want to give God thanks for this body of Christ that is here. I give God praise for Pastor Amar, his lovely daughter and family, his wife, Pastor Utrice, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Praise the name of the Lord and all of the leaders and pastors that are here. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's get straight into the word of God. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 12. I have a word from God. Hallelujah. 12 and we're going to start off at verses 1. Praise God. When you found it, just shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to, to four quartonians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church, listen, of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and keepers before the door kept the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands I'm about to declare the word of the Lord my message is thy kingdom come and I need you to begin to understand the Bible says that there was persecution that took place. And we know the season and the hour that we're in because we know it's an hour of persecution because the enemy is coming for your faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the Bible says that they apprehended Peter. And the reason they apprehended him, you've got to begin to understand, is because they knew that Peter carried an assignment. Somebody say the assignment. assignment. And so sometimes you've got to begin to understand from season unto season, the enemy sometimes does not uh, care to come directly at you, but sometimes he positions himself for the assignment that you carry. Are you hearing me this morning? And so the Bible says that they arrested him. But how many of you know that when they arrested him, it was in the context of the purpose and the will of God. Is somebody in the building this morning? I'm heading somewhere with this. So. Now, when the Bible talks about the kingdom of God, you need to begin to understand we are talking about dominion. Hello, somebody. The Bible says that Jesus said in his word that when, because when Jesus began to break it down, the Bible says that the Jews thought that, you know, we'll see the kingdom here or we'll see the kingdom there. Amen. But he said, no, the Bible says in Luke 17, 21, he said, neither shall they say lo here or there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, God, I'm about to preach here. Listen to me. So when the spirit of God comes and dwells on the inside of you, there's a resident king that dwells within you. And you have now left the ordinary to begin to operate from the extraordinary of God. Somebody shout amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So th there are some things that you need to begin to understand about how the kingdom of God operates. Somebody shout kingdom. Kingdom. The Bible says that he positioned him with many soldiers so that they can, listen to me, so that they can have him bound up because they did 
didn't want him to. How many of you have been in a situation, some of you are even right there right now, and you feel like the enemy has you bound up in a circumstance and situation, but I'm here to let you know that help is on the way because you got to understand some things. Where the kingdom of God dwells, there is liberty and there is freedom. Where the kingdom of God dwells, you've got to begin to understand the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost dwells. And the enemy cannot, God help me, Jesus. The enemy cannot put you in cage, listen to me, in cages. The enemy cannot barricade you. The enemy cannot stop the Holy Ghost. Somebody shot this morning. I said the devil, oh God help me. I said the devil can't stop the Holy Ghost this morning. That's why the Bible says it is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by my spirit, say of the Lord. Come on and give him praise in the house of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy, worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the church was praying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is not the hour to slacken your hands off the altars of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when the enemy tries to, let me tell you something, the safest place in this planet is right on the altar of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no other place that's safer is somebody in church this morning. The Bible says they encompassed him. But the Bible says that the church prayed. And I need you to begin to understand this morning that this is the hour of prayer. More than you've ever seen before. This is the hour, hallelujah, that God has called us. That's why the Bible says in the last days, say it, God, I will pour out of my spirit. This is the hour, God says. Listen to me. The longer you remain on the altars of God, are you hearing what I'm saying? Is where the power is going to manifest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's called the hour. Because we understand the season that we're in. You look at the world and you can see it everywhere taking place, people of God. Amen. The signs are before us. The Bible calls the nation of Israel, the, 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 listen to me, the fig tree. And when you look at the fig tree, you see the sign. Jesus said, you want to know what hour we're in? Look at the fig tree because everything is manifesting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm about to pray. Listen to me. The, the, Jesus is about to break forth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's not tarrying in this hour. He's about to show up. And the church is going to walk in a place being triumphant. Why? Because he said, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon my people. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now he positioned him. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord showed up. Why? Because the Bible says that the church prayed. Now I need you to run with me. Because the kingdom of God, you've got to begin to understand, it operates from within. Yes, Hello, somebody. We are not operating. The Bible says we are seated together where? In heavenly places. Oh God. My occupancy, I may be physically in the earth, but my occupancy is in the realm of the spirit because my authority, come on somebody, because my authority does not come from the natural realm. It comes from the realm of the spirit. Is somebody in church this morning shout amen. Hallelujah. So when the church prayed, the power of God was released. And the Bible says that the angel, hallelujah, was released on behalf, listen to me, of God's people. Because the Bible says that they were continually praying. Amen. They were what? Continually praying. I don't want you to give up this morning because I have a message from God. Sometimes you may feel, God, I, I bruised my knees on the altar. God, sometimes I've, I've begun to felt like, God, I, I become weary. But the Bible says, do not be weary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the spirit of God is in the building to sustain you and to catapult you in another realm this morning. Hallelujah. Where you're not going to fake. Tell your neighbor, I'm not fainting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A double portion is mine. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Jesus. We're going to get into the word. I'm going to release this real quick. Now watch this. And the Bible says in verses 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and a light shined where? In the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, 
see, because when dominion shows up, light shows up. God said, I've called you to be the ecclesia, the one that is called out. Because we are not, uh, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. Somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, I feel the pull of the Holy Ghost in here. God is about to shift you to the next level this morning. You're not, the way that you walked in, you're walking out with a greater level this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to stretch a little bit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm about to expand a little bit. Hallelujah. The Bible says that light showed up. And the Bible says he smote him and he said, listen. He said, Peter, he said, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Amen. When you are faithful people of God, I need you to understand. God is a God of covenant and he's a promise keeping God that fulfills his word. That's what the Bible says. My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what it was sent out to do. And it shall prosper to the thing where I have sent it, says the Lord. The word of God, listen to me, is not subjugated to flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the laws of the spirit outweigh the laws of the flesh. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said... Having spoiled principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places, he made a shoe of them openly and triumphed against them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are in, we are positioned in heavenly places. So as we begin to function, you've got to begin to understand that when Jesus enters into a situation, you've got to begin to understand and the kingdom of God is being made manifested. The king is exalted. How many begin to understand that when glory shows up, every other dominion falls, every other power falls, and everything in the atmosphere has to line itself up according to the word of God. Because God said, my word shall shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish what it was set out to do and it shall prosper to the thing where I have sent it says the Lord come on and give him praise in the house of God now there's some things that you need to understand about the glory now see when glory shows up you got to understand glory is timeless tell your neighbor it's timeless because the Bible says, according to John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was what? The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. It's talking about eternity right there. So when glory shows up, eternity shows up. Oh, God help me, Jesus. Listen to me. You got to hear the Word of the Lord. So when somebody is sick in their body, oh Jesus, and the, oh Jesus, and the Holy Ghost shows up, and dominion shows up, and glory shows up, the eternity of God puts the devil in his place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sickness cannot dwell where the glory dwells. Oh Jesus. I said disease cannot dwell. Pandemic. Jesus. Pestilence and plague cannot dwell where glory dwells. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when eternity shows up, everything must subject itself to the power and the dominion of the almighty God. I need a Pentecostal church to shout glory in this place and give him praise. He is eternal saints of God. And so no matter what is going on in your body right now, you begin to understand that dominion dwells. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when you're full of the Holy Ghost, the, listen to me, the resident king dwells within you. Let me tell you something. The Bible says his name is above every other name. Hallelujah. Sickness cannot dwell in an atmosphere where God dwells. Oh, Jesus. Your circumstances, hallelujah, has got to shift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When God dwells in the atmosphere. Because what we need is the presence of God. There's somebody in church this morning. I don't care what those prison bars look like. I don't care what, they, what the enemy tries to, to bring and put you. And your back is against a wall this morning. When dominion shows up in the atmosphere. Light shows up. Power. 
power shows up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ecclesia of God is manifested and the chains must be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout glory. Yes, God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout amen. He's doing a new thing, hallelujah. He's doing a new thing this morning in Jesus' name. The chains fall off. Hallelujah. Now watch this now in verses 8. It says, and the angel said unto him, gird thyself. I want you to prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, gird yourself. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're getting ready to go to the next level. Hello, somebody. Ooh. See, when the word is released into the atmosphere and the chains are broken, you're going to gird yourself up. Why? Because you're about to shift and you're about to move into the next dimension. You're about to go into another realm. You're about to enter into another season with God because the chains cannot barricade you no more when dominion dwells in the atmosphere. He said, Peter, he said, oh, Peter, gird yourself. Hallelujah. Then he told him, he said, listen, I need you to put on some sandals. Why? Because he told him, your feet is about to hit a new dimension. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The change cannot keep you bound when glory is in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Somebody say dominion. The Bible says, and so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Jesus. See, when God breaks chains off, your visual is not the same. You can't worship him the same way. Oh, God, help me this morning. I feel like praising God. See, because when I was bound up, I couldn't praise him. But now that he has set me free and the chains are broken off of me, I have clarity of mind, clarity of thought. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I have the ability to worship God because the chains are no longer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Dwelling in that atmosphere. My eyes see him on another level as I lift up my eyes. I can prophesy like like Isaiah said, I see the Lord. He is high and lifted up. His trail filled the temple and the angels cried out, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the Lord God that is worthy to be praised. Give him praise in the house of God. Chains are being broken. Shout amen. Hallelujah. The chains are broken. Jesus. Cast down thy garments. And the Bible says, and he went out and followed him in nine. Run with me now. And risk not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that lead it unto the city. And when which opened it, opened to them of its own accord. And they went out because see when God opens up doors. God I'm about to spell oh, Jesus. Just sometimes the Bible says weeping main door for the Oh God. Because see they don't know what you've been through. They don't know what you've gone through. Let me go. I'm gonna run off on a little rabbit trail right now. I gotta go. I gotta hit a rabbit trail a little bit. Hallelujah. Let me help you now, because I came in the house to push you just a little bit this morning. Jesus. In the year 2019. In the year 2019. I went out to preach in the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I was out there for about two, two years or so. And I was preaching. Now hear me out. And I, we had a revival that broke out for about three weeks. 
a friend, a dear friend of mine, Apostle Vernon Davis, came in from Holland and we preached there every night for 10 days or so in the church. And when the revival was over, I, I started noticing certain things and I inquired of the Lord and I found out that I was having a baby. Amen? Amen. After the revival, that was. Right. Watch this. And so, about a week or two after that, I was in the church building and service was going on. And I heard the voice of God say, the baby's name is Samuel. And I preached a message on Samuel. But when I came out of the service, the Lord said, yes, you, I had you release it to the church people. But he said that message is for you. And that baby that is inside of you, that baby's name is Samuel. And I said, oh my God. Now watch this, because I want you to understand. I, I, I want to I I bring this illustration home for you now. And so... I was very excited. Everybody was very happy that Samuel was coming. And I knew the promise of God. But six months into the season. Six months. Let me explain something to you. My husband, the Lord instructed him to buy a, 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 a ticket. And that we were supposed to go to New York. And I didn't even know anything. He just spoke to him and he bought this ticket. And we settled up to go to New York. Listen to me. And when I got there. You know, you have, as a pregnant woman, you have to be checking in and checking out, obviously, and especially if you take a long flight and all that stuff. I go to the, to the hospital, and the doctor said, there's no heartbeat. Now, I want you to understand how God begins to operate. Somebody say dominion. Oh, hallelujah this morning. The doctor said there's no heartbeat. And so, they induce labor. And I had to bring forth the baby, Sister Candace, and the baby was born dead. See, because sometimes we got to face circumstances and situations that we need glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I stood there alone. And let me tell you something. I didn't have none of my church people around me. Pastor Simon had nobody around me. Nobody was helping. There was nobody that was there. I was in that hospital with my immediate family. My, my husband and my daughter. My beautiful daughter Lizzie. That's all that there was. There was nobody that was there. And I came out of there. Let me tell you something how this enemy operates. The enemy began to operate and say things like. Well, I thought you I, I thought you preaching on glory. I thought you're preaching. Are you hearing what I'm saying? On healing and deliverances. And you've seen cancer dry up in services. And you've seen the dead raised. You've seen all these things. What happened to you? Did God forsake you now? This is what was going on. Let me tell you something. Every devil from every corner showed up. Every one of them that I cast out. They showed up on the scene and they say, Where, where is your God at this morning? Where you at? And I said, devil, I'm seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the son of God. Him that sits upon the throne, whose name is holy. He is the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. His name is Jesus. Whew. And some folks say, well, you know, why you don't take some rest? I said, but I ain't sick. I lost a baby, but I ain't sick. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I got on a flight and I go back to Trinidad, amen, and I'm back as normal in the church, amen, ministering. After two months, I'm on the pulpit and we had a service and a lot of ladies were at the front and I was praying and I'm ministering to them. And just as I'm standing here with you, my mouth is moving and I'm speaking to them. And in the midst of that, I'm hearing God speaking to me outside of me, moving my mouth and being physical in the building. How many know he's a supernatural God? And so he's in the building. And so he's talking to me now. And this is what God said to me. And he's not saying, well, you know, the seat Lord, welcome my beautiful daughter. Nothing like that. Daughter of Zion, nothing like that. He shows up in a strong voice. I say, do you remember Simba? You know, the Lion's King? I say, Lord, what you doing? And my mouth is moving here. And I'm like, okay. I say, yes, Lord. I know who's the Lion King. He say, you know who Simba is? I say, yes, I do. He said, do you remember what, what, what Mufasa, what happened with Mufasa and Scar and what they did to Simba? I said, yes, I do, Jesus. Listen to me, people of God. And the Lord said, what did Mufasa say to him in the dream? I said, Lord, he said, remember who you are. Yeah. 
she all that time I was quiet all that time I didn't say nothing all that time I didn't move I didn't do anything because I was in a place where I said God we're gonna do your business and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna focus on anything else I'm gonna do your business but in that moment when God showed up there he said I need you to remember who you are and the reason for that is because sometimes when you go through calamities and you go through all kinds of catastrophic things and hell shows up on the door sometimes you can you can tend to move a little bit and say God what's going on in here but see my faith didn't move in God my circumstances moved but my faith did not move in God and God said remember who you are and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost catapulted me back into a place where nobody was over there but when God showed up in the midst and he put an anointing are you hearing what I'm saying he said I behold I've called you and I said my God let me explain something to you every cell in my body was overturned everything that the enemy said in that moment was broken why because dominion showed up light showed up the rhema showed up the king showed up his name is Jesus give him praise because my back was against the wall and you know what it is and the enemy coming and laughing at you in your face and say where is your God and he's not going to help you he's not doing nothing for you what's going on with you but God restored because why I said God and the Lord said you got to remember who you are you got to know whose you are and who you belong to See, because you got to understand in that moment it's not the people that were around you it's that relationship that you have with God let me tell you something after continuing ministering the word of God continue doing what God has called me to do but let me tell let me help you a lot, little bit longer now I never prayed for another child let me help you I never prayed I never fasted on that thing I just I left it in the hands of God and I said God thy will be done are you hearing what I'm saying but how many of you understand where dominion dwells there's power are you hearing what I'm saying let me, let me explain something to you. I sat in New York because it was our anniversary on the 26th of July. I lost the baby about, I, uh, baby died about four days before. And we had to sit in a, in a restaurant to have something to eat. And how you eating over there? You know what I'm saying? And it's like four days ago, but we got to be together because we got to hold it on. Amen? And that was on the 26th of July. Amen? And we were in there. Went back home. But I want you to watch how God operates because somebody understand he's a supernatural God. The month of death was July. Amen? In exactly 12 months from then, Zephaniah shows up in the room, in the room. Oh, she Ramando. See, God said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. I give when you empty yourself before God and you seek Him with all of your mind and all of your soul and all of your heart. I didn't have to pray for the thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The, listen to me. God gave it to me in 12 months. In exactly one year, in the month of July, life shows up where death used to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? My son is now two years old. You'll see him running around the church in a little bit. Hallelujah. His name is Zephaniah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because what God does, he will cause you to be restored. The Bible says what the cattle, oh my, 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 my. And the palmer worm, hallelujah, and the locust has eaten out. When you stand upon the word of God and you remain faithful to the word and you remain faithful unto the Lord, God will bring to pass his promises. Why? And the chains are broken. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You might have come into this building this morning with some thing I don't know what you're facing this morning I don't know what you might going through uh, might be going through but let me tell you something help is not on the way help is in the building his name is Jesus I said help is in the building his name is Jesus he is the king of kings and the Lord 
of all lords. He is the alpha. Let me tell you, I sang that song because I didn't even ask for the thing. And God said, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Why? Because you didn't moan and complain. You didn't cry. You didn't say, God, where are you? I didn't turn my back on God. See, because when I started off, I didn't start with Zephaniah. And I didn't start with Samuel. It was me and Jesus. And it's always going to be me and Jesus. They are secondary. And he is primary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I need you to give him a primary praise now. Come on and give him a primary shout. Give him glory and honor and praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb of God that shines in the darkness. That shines, hallelujah, in your situation. Tell your neighbor, don't you ever give up on God. Don't you ever give up on God. He is fighting in, oh Jesus. I said Jesus is fighting for you in rooms that you don't even know right now. He is fighting battles for you that you don't even know about. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's on the throne and the power and the glory belongs to him. Share glory. I feel the glory in the building now. Renski remende. Hallelujah. We're almost through. I'm going to read this out real quick and we're done. Jesus. The Bible says there was a big gate and the door the doors opened up automatically. Want to know why? Because dominion was present. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the door. The only door that will open up any and every miracle that you need. You just have to fixate your eyes on him. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the north and don't look to the south. Put your eyes on him this morning. Because let me tell you something. When he shows up, everything else changes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a fictional Jesus now. I'm not talking about the Jesus that your neighbor talks about. I'm not talking about the one that you might just Google or, or pull up on Wikipedia or Encyclopedia Britannica. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about the Jesus that when you call upon his name, the atmosphere begins to shift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Holy Ghost begins to descend in the atmosphere. That's the one that I'm talking about this morning. The one that will set you free and give you a paradigm shift and cut about you to the level. Are you hearing what I'm saying of the supernatural? That you walk in the fullness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the power of the Holy Ghost this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. God, you're good. I got a two-year-old that sings, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The first song that he learned is Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Why? Because there's glory that rests. Let me tell you something. Some of you might be in a place where you've been waiting on God for something. But let me tell you something. Not every open door means God opened it. You got to learn how to wait when the king opens the door. Because God said when I open the door, I will add no sorrow to the thing. When Jesus opens that door. You'll never walk a day in sorrow. Somebody knows. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life, says the Lord. Hallelujah. We're done here now. Am I good, pastor? The minutes are okay? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We're almost through here. The Bible says, the door opened up on its own accord in verses 10. And they went out and passed on through one street forthwith, but the angel departed. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all expectation of the people of the Jews. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So every expectation of the enemy was destroyed. Why? Because the Bible says that dominion showed up. And if you understand what dominion is, it means that there's a God that governs.
governs and there's only one authority that operates in with that dominion with the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God is made manifested, everything that is in the realm has got to subject itself to the power and the authority of the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The word is eternal. I need it embedded into your spirit. I said the word of God is eternal. Amen. And the word, the Bible says, it, it cuts what? Sharper than a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. The enemy can no longer set you in a place where you are blocked up and barricaded this morning. If you need healing in your body this morning, God is about to heal you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you need restoration in your marriage, it doesn't matter what it is. It, whatever the enemy has tried to bring against you this morning, there is enough fuel here this morning by the spirit of the living God to bring you up to the next level. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God glory this morning. We give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. We give him worship this morning. Right where you are this morning, I just want you to lift up your hands right where you are. Those of you that know how to pray in the Holy Ghost this morning, please begin to pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to pray in the spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and begin to speak in that supernatural language. Because God is about to break forth this morning. God is about to do a new thing for you this morning. God is about to shift you into the next realm this morning. I came to prophesy this morning that there's a new level that's coming to the building. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. I want you to pray like you know that God is about to give you a miracle that you've never had before. God is about to give you something that you didn't have before you walked into this building. Come on somebody. Begin to give God praise. Begin to open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Somebody pray in the spirit this morning. Somebody pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rishkantaramandishkete. Reshkitur remende.